All right, side notes, not a new thing, but today I just want to show you the differences between DLSS 3 frame generation and FSR 3.1 frame generation. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, we're not going to be looking at visual differences, etc. I just want to show you the difference in performance. And also, there's been a few words regarding Spider-Man and Miles Morales not working well with the frame generation, especially at 4K. And uh, that's why we're starting with uh, Spider-Man. We'll be testing four of the games that uh, have uh, FSR 3.1. One. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, FSR 3.1 uh, basically just means that, uh, well, it's got the the better upscaler, FSR 3.1 upscaler, so image quality is improved. And then also FSR 3 frame generation is now decoupled from FSR, meaning that you can use it at native with any upscaler, DLSS, XSS, IGTI, whatever. Uh, it's no longer coupled to FSR. All right, so currently we are we're running on an rx 4070 super with a 14600 kf cpu and then we also have ddr5 6400 mega transfers per second cl32 memory uh, and currently we're at 1440p on the high preset i do have uh, dlss uh, frame generation enabled the reason for that is uh, that's why i'm starting with this game right i think it's very uh, there's issues with this game because if you don't start the game with dlss frame generation enabled uh, sometimes you can't enable it in the middle of the game right and then it'll only give you fsr uh, fsr3 frame generation so on the high preset not very high settings right um and uh, 1440p and uh, frame generation is enabled and dlss super resolution is set to quality right so if we just uh, have a look here we are very 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 cpu bound <laughs> even with frame generation we aren't seeing like we, we rarely see 80% uh, GPU usage here, but you can see our lows are pretty decent, uh, especially our 1% lows, 0.1% uh, lows aren't that great, but yeah, we are getting an average of uh, 220 frames per second and standing still in this specific area, we are also getting around 220 frames per second, right? So I'm just going to switch this to native and then we'll enable FSR frame generation as well. Sorry, I said native. I just mean we're just going to disable frame generation. So in this specific spot, we were getting 220 frames per second. So frame generation is disabled. All the settings are still the same. And now you can see we are getting 180 frames per second, right? So frame generation definitely improves the motion fluidity here it did boost our frame rate uh, quite a bit and uh, i actually want to show you at 4k as well 4k is where the real issue is right but you can still see <laughs> our uh, gp usage is hovering between 50 and 70 percent this is it's very very cpu heavy and ray tracing is not enabled right we do have uh, only around six gigabytes of vram used here and 7.4 gigabytes allocated and um all right so let's just stand still here 160 odd frames per second yeah like it, it changes quite a bit right so 174 175 frames per second so let's just go ahead and enable uh, FSR frame generation so now you can see oh well there we go so DLSS frame generation is an option sometimes it isn't and uh, it, it gets very annoying all right so we still have DLSS super resolution just now with AMD FSR frame generation and if we have a look at our frame rate now now we are getting 290 frames per second so 120 frames per second that boost to our frame rate or to the motion fluidity remember this doesn't improve your performance right the the gpu does what the gpu does this inserts fake frames ai generated interpolated frames uh, depending which technology you use but it, it inserts interpolated frames uh, between real frames and uh, it boosts the motion fluidity you don't get the benefit of having a lower input latency right so i just quickly want to see if we can enable the lss3 frame generation standing still yeah so we are sitting at 280 frames per second right okay so we have the lss frame generation enabled we were getting 280 frames per second now we're getting 200 frames per second so i do think there's a bug with the dlss frame generation in the specific game but uh, you can see that the the performance uh, or the the frame rate is definitely much higher with the uh, fsr three frame generation into this game with this setup anyway all right uh, i just want to show you at 4k what actually happens <laughs> you when you enable the lss frame generation the performance is actually worse all right so i'm just going to do one quick test at 4k all right so we're at 4k now i just want to point out 
you have to use exclusive full screen in this game. Otherwise, DLSS3 frame generation actually makes no difference even at 1440p, right? So we're on the high preset still. Everything is still the same. DLSS super resolution set to quality. DLSS frame generation is enabled. And we're just going to, we're not going to be looking at minimums or anything else. So just going to look at uh, the difference between the frame rate. And we are getting 115 frames per second here with the frame generation enabled. Now, I saw a lot of people say that maybe it's a VRAM related because uh, DLSS 3 frame generation does use more VRAM. So let's just go ahead and drop this down to low. Okay, so texture quality is set to, to low. That has the biggest impact on VRAM. And if we have a look at the game now, whoops, we don't want to see that. We're sitting with six gigabytes of VRAM used, right? And 7.6 gigabytes of VRAM allocated on 12 gigabyte GPU. That should be plenty enough. Even if we have a look at task manager, VRAM usage is sitting at around seven gigabytes. So when when definitely not running out of VRAM here. And if we then go ahead and enable FSR frame generation, I'm just going to leave that uh, open there. So FSR frame generation, remember 120 something frames per second. And now if we go back into the game, we are getting 220 frames per second, right? So a, an extremely high boost to the frame rate. Now, the, the weird thing here is that if we then now disable frame generation. Remember with DLSS 3 frame generation, we were getting 120. With FSR, we were getting 220. And now if we go back into the game, we're getting 150. So DLSS 3 frame generation is definitely broken in this game. You can see uh, five gigabytes of VRAM used. And if we then just, I don't think it's going to, there we go. So DLSS 3 frame generation, if we enable it, we're sitting at 150 frames per second VRAM usage at five gigabytes. And if we go ahead and apply that, VRAM usage goes up to 6.2 gigabytes, give or take, and our frame rate drops. So definitely something not right with this specific game. All right, let's move on to the others. All right, so just to show you what full screen and exclusive full screen actually does here, right? This is Ghost of Tsushima, and we are at 1440p on the very high preset, sitting at 150 frames per second, give or take. Let me just show you the settings here quickly. So 1440p and DLSS is set to quality and frame generation is set to DLSS 3 frame generation, right? Now, we're set to, uh, set to full screen. Now, if we have a look at our frame rate, we're getting 150 something frames per second. Now, if we just switch over to exclusive full screen here, now we are getting 172 frames per second. So just use exclusive full screen when you use the LSS3 frame generation. Now you can see in game, our frame rate is also around 30 frames per second higher, right? So let's just go ahead and uh, compare the frame rate, sorry. So we are getting 170, 165, 170 frames per second, right? So if we then, I'm um, once again going to enable uh, FSR frame generation first, and then we'll go to native because once again, you sometimes you can't use the LSS3 frame generation again after you've enabled FSR frame generation. So 160, 170 frames per second goes up to 185, 190 frames per second, right? So not that big a boost, but if you are using different settings, higher settings, and you are aiming for a high refresh rate experience, that 20, 30 frames per second might just be the difference between 90 frames per second, 120 frames per second on something like a 4060 Ti or 4060, for example, right? So 190. Now, if we go and uh, test versus a native here, yeah not native, I keep on calling it native, without frame generation. Remember 165 frames per second with DLSS and 190 with the FSR frame generation, and now we're sitting at 115. Now this game does not have the same issue as Spider-Man at 4K, the uh, performance or the frame rate does increase when, when using DLSS 3 frame generation at 4K. All right, so let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up we've got Ratchet and Clank. Uh, once again, another Nexus game. Uh, rem remember, it's only the Nexus games that have uh, received FSR 3.1 updates so far. So getting 202 frames per second here. Let me just show you the settings quickly if I can find it. So we're at 1440p once again, just uh, with DLSS frame generation, DLSS set to quality and we do have the very high preset 
enabled yeah right so if we go back into our game let's uh, just have a look at our numbers here vram usage is very high we're sitting at 9.5 gigabytes of vram used this is without ray tracing even and vram allocated is sitting at 11 gigabytes okay so at 4k strangely enough we don't run out of vram either because at 4k with the dlss frame generation the frame rate does improve or increase so anyway getting 200 frames per second here right so let's go ahead and just enable uh fsr frame generation quickly so yeah I, sorry I, I know that the uh, that these are a little bit out of order usually i started native but as i said sometimes i'm not in, I'm not able to enable dlss frame generation right so we just use uh fsr frame generation yeah we were sitting with 200 frames per second right so let's just go back into the game so it's 235 frames per second that's uh 12 to 15 percent increase in our frame rate there our vram allocated dropped by around 500 megabytes and our vram usage dropped by around 400 megabytes right so fsr frame generation is definitely more vram friendly just the way it, it works is just slightly different from nvidia and then also the boost to your frame rate and motion fluidity is a little bit better now whether there are significant differences when it comes to visuals i'll let you decide i'm not that good at uh, pixel peeping and uh, actually seeing <laughs> what the differences are i just like to play games that are higher frame rates and i'm not too concerned about visual quality uh, except if it is really obvious and really distracting so i know i didn't test uh, ghost of shishima at 4k but l let's go ahead and test this one at 4k right just uh, so you, you have an idea if you actually want to play at 4k with uh, this 4070 super so we'll just use the exact same settings i think we might not be able to use dlss so see <laughs> okay we can't use the lss frame generation uh, i have to restart the game but we'll be testing at 4k when i come back Right, so yeah, we are back at 4K and I can see our VRAM usage is sitting at 10.2 gigabytes, right? So let's just uh, show you the settings quickly. It's exactly the same settings as previously, just uh, we're at 4K now and we do have DLSS 3 frame generation enabled. So DLSS set to quality and on the very high preset, right? So we are getting 100 and... Uh, 116 frames per second 115 give or take which is definitely not terrible definitely playable at 4k you might run out of vram at these settings just in the specific scene we're not running out of vram just yet which we can prove by going uh, disabling a frame generation but we'll just go with fsr frame generation quickly so let's just go ahead and apply that and now if we go back into our uh, game here you can see we're getting 144 frames per second so another 30 frames per second uh, increase into our frame rate by using fsr frame generation and our vram usage is sitting at 10.4 now and i mean the frame rate is definitely higher so if we just go ahead and test without frame generation quickly just to make sure that we we actually do see a difference with both technologies i'm just going to disable that and if we have a look now so dlss3 frame generation netted does around 20 frames per second and then fsr netted does another 30 above that so you can go from 100 frames per second to almost 150 frames per second by using fsr frame generation uh, in this game even at 4k on the very high preset so uh, as i said you might run out of vram uh with the uh, with these settings because we are sitting at 10.1 gigabytes of vram used to play a little bit and that will creep up and um uh, Maybe just play on 4K medium if you do plan on playing on 4K. All right, let's move on to the last game. All right, our last game we're going to have a look at is Horizon Forbidden West. And you can see we are getting around 150 frames per second, give or take. So let's just, let's just show you the settings here quickly. Once again, exclusive full screen, 1440p. Uh, just explain the exclusive full screen. This only applies, it seems, when we are not running at native resolution. This is a native 4K output the 4k 60 pro mk2 capture card right so if we run below 4k then exclusive full screen is needed for dlss frame generation to work okay so anyway this, these are the settings on the pretty much the very high like it's a it's a custom preset that i use just some the settings set to performance but uh, 
generally it's just a, a mix between high and very high. So we are getting 145, 150 frames per second in this specific scene. And then if we just go ahead and enable FSR frame generation, right now you can see we are getting a frame rate of 165 frames per second with FSR three frame generation enabled. So another 20 frames per second increase over DLSS frame generation. And you can see our VRAM usage is sitting at around 7.1 gigabytes. All right, so I'm just going to be testing this game at 4K as well, just standing still. I mean, sure, this is not a full benchmark run. We don't test the lows, etc. There's really no big difference between the, the lows or the frame time pacing. Everything seems pretty okay with FSR frame generation. I actually play these games using FSR frame generation on this GPU. All right, let's move over to 4K. Right, so using the exact same settings at 4K here, just with DLSS frame generation enabled. And once again, it's my custom preset. Like I said, it's the very high preset, just with some high settings mixed in. And uh, if we have a look at our frame rate here, we are getting around 80, let, let's call it 90 frames per second. Our VRAM usage is sitting at nine gigabytes. So we, we definitely, well, we seemingly don't have a VRAM issue here. And I mean, this is actually pretty okay. The input latency will be slightly higher because our base frame rate should be much lower now. But you can you can drop down DLSS to balanced or even performance at 4K. You'll be fine when it comes to visuals. I mean, that's personal opinion. But anyway, so getting 86 frames per second here. Let's go ahead and then just enable FSR frame generation quickly. All right, and now we are seeing 105, 106 frames per second with FSR frame generation enabled. Our VRAM usage is a little bit lower, around 800 megabytes lower, actually. And uh, I mean, sure, it's not the biggest difference going from 85 to 105, but it is a free increase in your frame rate. As I said, there might be some visual differences that you'll pick up if you pixel peep, but personally, I, I don't really notice the, the difference between DLSS 3 frame generation and FSR frame generation in these games that I tested, but your mileage may vary, right? So let's just quickly see what the uh, performance is like at native. I'm just going to leave that open because it's not in the way. So not I keep on saying native wow. without any frame generation, right? So let's just go ahead and apply that. So without frame generation, we are seeing 66 frames per second. Our frame time graph is a little bit choppy there. Not entirely sure why, but you can see our VRAM usage is a lot lower than with any of the frame generation techniques, but uh, especially DLSS uh, frame generation. We probably won't be able to maintain 60 frames per second using these settings, depending on where we are. But there you have it. You get around a, a 30 frames per second uh, uh, increase in your frame rate by using DLSS 3 frame generation, even at 4K. And then another 10 to 15 on top of that if you use FSR frame generation. Perfect for a 120 hertz panel, I'd say. All right, so that's going to be the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.